Hi guys. Hello. How's it going? Hey guys. <laughs> good morning. Well, I guess I should say good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. So yeah. for everyone watching, Pixie is in the UK. Richard and Hannah are in LA and I'm in New York. So we are all on different time zones. But um welcome to the green room, guys. I'm so happy you guys can come on to the green room. It's so this is our seventh episode, so it's really exciting. Um, I'm hoping that summer holds up a little longer so I continue the the green background with the trees. <laughs> um, but yeah, so for anybody that's watching that hasn't watched before, um, the green room is partnered with Jed Foundation, which is a nonprofit for mental health, which obviously is something that's super important to me. Um, and Hannah will put the donation link in the chat if anybody would be kind enough to donate to mental health because obviously you know something that we all deal with and also especially during 2020 it's a very relevant subject so um and then she is the music is also something that um i thought would be really cool to include with the green room because i'm a very like female forward thinker and um she is the music represents and you know obviously stands behind females that are trying to make a difference so you know, nothing against males. We love males, but you know. <laughs> um, so anyway, welcome to the green room. Hannah, this is the first time Hannah's been on with us. So I'll let her take the take the stage. Welcome to the green room. Today we have Pixie Lot award-winning singer, songwriter, and artist. We have Jenna Andrews, founder of the Green Room, also multi-platinum singer, songwriter, vocal producer, and executive producer for artists such as JLo, BTS, Little Mix, Benny, Noah Cyrus, as well as a &R for records and co-owner of 27 Music Publishing. And we have Richard Wolf, author of In Tune, Music as the Bridge to Mindfulness, host of the podcast Wolf In Tune, and music and mindfulness instructor at USC, along with being an Emmy award-winning composer, multi-platinum producer, remixer and songwriter and CEO of the Producers Lab. Wowza, yeah. <laughs> I love that, Hannah, that was great. Um, <laughs> so no, thank you guys so much again for being here. And Hannah Hannah is a boss herself, just to, just to say, she manages incredible songwriters and also is part of the She Is The Music movement, which is amazing. And it made so much sense to be doing this together. So I love that you're part of this, Hannah. And I love you. So anyway, so we can get on to um, today's subject of meditation. Um, I'll actually just open the floor to, to Pixie. So what made you get into meditation, Pixie? Um, thank you for having me on the green room this evening. Um, so what got me into meditation? Um, I guess I just started like hearing more and more about it. And um, when I was going through like a hard time, I was Googling, you know, what good things you can do and meditation just kept popping up. Um, and I thought, why not give it a go? See if it's for me, you know, because not everything's for everyone, but I wanted to give it a go because it seemed easy enough. And um, so I just found a little place local to my flat where I'm where I am at the moment. And um loved it I just I just started to do more and more of it and I think after you do it like over a period of time is when you start to realize the benefits and I feel like it just really puts things into perspective it just gives you clarity um, it gets you into a really good frame of mind headspace and I just think that our brains and our minds are such powerful things I think um, it's good to look after our minds and you know everyone has different things that they do that help sometimes it is exercise for some people um you know I don't know cooking for other people um but I just I really really have got into meditation and because I felt the benefits of it I want to help spread the word and and help people um get into it that's really cool I, I mean yeah. Like me, by the way. So I'm 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 appreciating this episode just to soak in the benefits. So Richard, tell us how you got into meditation and when you got into meditation. I can't wait for this. 
Well, it's a very long story, but I'll try to make it short. <laughs> okay. I've been doing a tango with meditation my whole life. I started when I was 17 years old, reading a lot of books about Zen and, and uh, Eastern philosophy. And I said, I'm 17. It's about time I get enlightened. So I went to a Zen center and I learned how to meditate Zen style. And I continued in college for one year, but I just wasn't very good at it. I, my mind would bolt in every direction. I could not sit still and, and focus. And uh, various times in my life, I got into crisis. I tried meditation again, didn't work. But as uh, Hannah mentioned, I was uh, in the record business, working with a lot of um, great people and projects. But um, I thought the stress levels were too, too uh, rough. And it was a time when gangster rap, I was in hip hop, hip hop R&B. Gangster rap was taking over, and I decided I've got a young family. I want to move into something a little less stressful, which would be TV music. But that was not less stressful. It was, in fact, <laughs> a lot more stressful. And it culminated in a panic attack, massive panic attack. I was at the hospital. Um, I thought it was a heart attack, but it turns out it was a panic attack. And my therapist prescribed for me 10 minutes of meditation in the morning and 10 minutes of meditation at night. And when he said that, bells went off in my head because I had been trying to do this my whole life, but now I better learn how to do it. And so I started to really focus on trying to meditate. And I read something by a Tibetan animal trainer who said that training the wild mind is like training a wild animal. <laughs> when you're leading the animal down the path, let's say a horse, the horse will want to investigate something, get distracted. You just gently bring the horse back to the path. And when I read that, I said, wow, this is like my life in music because I was not gifted with any discernible talent for playing an instrument, but I practiced. It was repetition. And when I made a mistake, I didn't beat myself up. I just said, okay, I'll do it over again. So when I had this revelation that, hey, Meditation is the same thing as music in terms of you do it, you repeat it until you get it, that I thought, well, I can do this. And when it happened that I could do it, all these other connections between music and meditation came to the light. And I understood why people like Paul McCartney, Carlos Santana, and J. Cole, and Kendrick Lamar, and Alicia Keys all meditate. Right. Wow. It's so, it's so, it's so crazy that you mentioned that this all came from a panic attack because I had a similar experience when I first got signed to Island Def Jam. Um, and you know, I was like young and sort of like bright eyed, bushy tailed, like, Oh, this is like my first record deal. And I, you know, seemingly it was really good and you know, it should be a really exciting moment, but you know, I guess all what I learned about panic attacks. Well, first of all, let me explain that basically, you know, a week after that all happened, I was in West Hollywood and ended up like, like passing out and thinking that I was going to have a heart attack, same, similar to you, had an ambulance take me to the hospital, fully called my parents, were like, I'm dying, this whole thing. Um, and when I got to the hospital, the doctor was like, honey, you like, you're just having a panic attack, which was so crazy. But when, you know, obviously I continued to have them after that. And, you know, it's interesting because I learned that panic attacks have no it's they only they they come they're not like necessarily coming just when you're going through something it may be like a, a, a number of events that have happened that just happen to escalate to the amount of the the panic attack happening right now for instance you may think you're relaxed but then the panic attack just happens so that was something that you know um made me interested in in meditation as well but um but I have not continued, I haven't been the greatest at continuing in it, which is why I'm so happy to be doing this today with you guys, because I want to actually learn more and how, you know, along with the people watching, I would love to just, you know, understand the ways that, that I can use it and really be able to focus in it, you know, so, but it's interesting that panic attack was the thing that made you get into it. Yeah. Um, do you feel like, what are the bridges between music and uh, mindfulness? And why do you think they're important? Well, um, the bridges, there's 12 of them, and it includes concentration, dedication. You know, musicians are dedicated. You have to focus on when you're working on a song, you're focusing on the song, not on yourself, but you want to make that song the best song possible. So all your concentration is on the song. 
Um, there's so many, there's um, mindful listening, you know, uh, being able to really focus in and listen without interpreting necessarily, but to absorb uh, without judging. Um, there's, there's just, I can go on and on and on, sympathetic vibrations, there's transcending, one of my favorites is transcending the self. Wow. Um, go into all of these and there is a harmony of mind, body and feeling. When you're making music, your mind, body and feeling are totally integrated together, um, which is an unusual state of being, you know, that your mind isn't somewhere in you, because your body is always here in the present moment, but your mind could be elsewhere. But in music, you're all together, you're whole. Music makes us whole because that's one of the reasons. And then there's silence, you know, musicians can really get into silence and appreciate silence. And that's, silence is not an absence, it's a presence. And um, that's, that's like the last stage, that's the last, the payoff is going beyond sound and beyond silence. That's really crazy that you mentioned the, the connection between um, mind, body, soul, and you use the word harmony. I think that's so cool. And, you know, with music, no, it's just, it's, it's really, I, I love that. That's, that should be like the mantra for today's episode because I feel like the, I'm learning so much about how music really is so healing and we're so lucky to have it really, you know, whether or not you make it or listen to it. I mean, Pixie, do you have any, any like, exercises or certain meditation routines that you do before your sessions or anything that, you know, has really helped you write some of your songs or any particular song that you've written um, and you feel like meditation has really helped you dig into something that wouldn't, you wouldn't have otherwise? Yeah, I feel like, um, cause I think I started meditating about two or three years ago, I think. And, um, when I started to really get into it was when I was actually in LA and the only reason I go to LA is to write music. So I was going to this um, studio out there called Unplug, which I was telling you guys about yesterday. Um, mm. And they do these amazing classes. And I remember I was just like wandering around Melrose um, on my own one Sunday because I was voice resting and uh, I stumbled across it. And I, I can't remember, but it was something like, oh, um, they do classes like uh, 40 minute classes all day. And you can just like drop in, take a class and then scoot back out. And it was almost like they said it was like a blow dry bar, but for meditation, you know, like when we can go to the dry bar and get our hair done. Oh, that's so cool. That makes you feel better. And I was like, oh, wow, that's cool. So I just started doing these drop in classes. And then the more I did it, the more I just like fell absolutely in love with it and was uh, trying to do it, like trying to drop into these classes every day. Because when you were a new, like signed up new, you can do like unlimited classes, like this deal for two weeks. So I just did as many as I could. And I tried all different styles. I tried like visualizing ones. I did breath work. I did, um, there's like all different types that they would do throughout the day. And I just tried them all and I just loved it. And um, yeah, since then, I've got the app now on my phone. I've just kept it up. And um, yeah, it's great for people who are, you know, going through tough times, but also to, to, to keep it up so that when you do hit any tough times, you can stay, you can go to that place of stillness and it doesn't, it doesn't make you, um, you know, out of whack as much. You know, you can always find that, that um, calmness that you sort of like, build over time from going to meditation and I always think as well like it's I don't think you can do it wrong like it's not you know some of my friends I'm like I'll give this a go and they're like oh no but I can't because my thoughts are everywhere and I can't sit still and I can't but I honestly don't think you can do it wrong obviously the more you do it the more um used to it you get but um as long as you're just sitting there and being like aware whether you're just focusing on your breath or the words that they're saying in the app in your ears um yeah you're still meditating you're still doing it um and yeah I've just I've just loved it um oh sorry that wasn't even the question was it yeah so sorry I did it in LA and I was doing it before going to my sessions I went off on a tangent there um I was doing it before going into my sessions my writing sessions and it definitely just 
you know, made me in a just a really good headspace, great zone for writing. And like you were saying yesterday, Jenna, um, when you write, you feel like it comes through you. Like it would be yes. really cool to be like meditate. And then a lot of people, like I've spoken to other people who meditate, um, this guy who writes books, he was like, I, I sit there, I meditate in the morning. And then like the words just come straight out off onto the page and it just like comes through um so it's just a great way of like clearing and focusing your your mind oh I my god that's so <laughs> no no I love that that's exactly you know it's like you almost like you're enlightened you know it's like it's something it's something so so in a way I guess like as much as I don't practice meditation I think I in some ways I do I, and maybe it's just something that that in the sense of you know, when I can only relate it to songwriting, but like, yeah, I guess like when you are sort of focusing in on something and you feel like you let the universe take a hold of, of you in a way and you just feel like, like, oh my God, this isn't like you become something else. It's really, it's really interesting. Um, but I feel, that, I feel that it happens as well without realizing when you're performing, when I'm performing, I get that. Like, I feel like yes. I'm zone that everything is just aligned it's like my best feeling ever obviously that's why I love performing but I feel on that level when I'm performing as well I feel like it comes through I mean that's really I would actually Richard I was gonna like do you have any techniques or anything that you feel as a performer or for anybody for that matter um when you're nervous or you have a lot of anxiety or you feel like you may have a panic attack because some people don't can't really identify what a panic attack is obviously right so if you're feeling you know those ways what what do you feel like are the ways that you you think that somebody can use as techniques for that if they don't know how to meditate before well you should always have a plan b which is to have a tranquilizer at, at hand i'm kidding i'm kidding <laughs> oh my god i was like wait <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I wanted to follow up with some of the things you've been saying. Uh, okay. so, so Pixie had mentioned that, that when, when meditation, she finds the benefits, she wants to tell other people about it. And that's something I totally identify because when I finally <laughs> was able to do it after a lifetime of struggle and seeing how music prepared me and able to do it, I wanted everybody to know, hey, you can do this. You already right. have the skills and the sensibilities to do this. So, so it's, I completely identify with that. And on, on the point that the both of you were making, that when we make music, we may be playing an instrument, but we feel like we ourselves are instruments of something else, something bigger than us that's expressing itself through us, which is why people like Bob Dylan said, I don't write the songs, the songs write me. Yes. Oh, uh, I love that line. It's got goosebumps. I want that on the wall. Oh my God, it is the, literally so true. <laughs> yeah, but here's the here's the rub, though. See, um, people have to. You go on stage, and you are this, as Pixie was saying, and you were saying, Jenna, you are this performer where you're transcending yourself. It's you, it's you're not your little self anymore, but you're going beyond that. Yeah. Like Bruce Springsteen said, I rise up and I vanish into the music. That's so cool. Oh, oh, uh, Lisa, Lisa, Lisa. Lisa. I love it. This is so great. But then what happens is that the music stops. And, you, you know, he says he rises up. Well, you got to come down off the stage and you got to come down off your high. And now you have to live with yourself. Right. And you have to face the challenges of your life. And so how do you do that? Well, as you guys have been saying, one of the techniques is to train yourself, to train your body and your mind. This is not only mental training. This is training your entire being to learn how to find the sanctuary within yourself, to find the stillness, as Pixie said, within yourself, to feel that I belong here in the present moment and to be okay with that and to learn how to tolerate all these negative or toxic things that might happen and learn how to just be with them and how to handle them in a calm, peaceful, compassionate manner. Compassionate to yourself, compassionate to the world. Wow, it's so, it's so, it's so interesting. Like you have the way you talk 
almost is like already so calming. It's so funny. Yeah. I'm like as I'm listening to you talk, I immediately I'm like, wow, why do I feel so relaxed? Yeah. <laughs> I just need your Richard, I need your voice in my ear all the time. No, but um it's really no, but you know what? It's there's not it's obviously no mistake, right? That this is a very real thing in terms of like, you know, being able to have that connectivity in the sense of like, um, you know, like I always think I'm kind of, I thought it was crazy for thinking I'm an empath, but in some ways I really, cause sometimes like you, when you go in and you feel energies, you know what I mean? Like you go into a room and immediately you feel bad or immediately, immediately like you don't know why you feel a certain type of way, but you feel it. It's almost a good thing. Cause it means you're like very connected to, to something that's so unknown in a way. So I think that that's, that's actually a, a, a gift. And I think for a long time, it's almost scary. And, and, and I don't know for sure, but I almost think maybe that made the panic attacks worse because it's scary to, to, to go in and feel so much. And I'm like, how are you identifying what this is? And is, am I supposed to be feeling this? But if you're able to control it and, and find the calm in it, and be able to use it as like a, a power, then it's pretty cool. I mean, it's, it's, it's something that's like, wow, it doesn't even feel human. Right. I mean, I don't even know what to call that. Well, I think, I think, you know, before when the panic attack came, it surprised you, right? You were, yeah, you didn't know what it was. Okay. Yeah. So now you're more aware of the symptoms of when it can start. I mean, it, I haven't gotten over panic attacks. So I can tell when it's going to start. And yeah, then I mean, I'll address it, I'll face it, and I'll breathe with it. I'll say, okay, and, and, and the body just takes care of itself. You know, it is a physical training. You're conditioning yourself to learn how you're going to tip into anxiety in, in, in a dangerous way. You learn that, and your body learns how to calm itself, the mind-body together in harmony, calm yourself down and be okay. And that's training, it's just like you go to the gym or do your yoga a couple of times a week or every week on a consistent basis. It's the same thing. It's a consistent training. Like how long do you meditate for, for both of you? How long do each of you meditate a day? Whoever yeah. goes, take <laughs> me. Um, so I, I'm like, I, I, I'm trying to be, what's it called? Regular. Um, but I do fail sometimes, but basically my app um, is what I use because I find that the easiest. And I think, um, you know, anyone that's new to meditation, I do recommend using an app because I think it's just an easy way to get into it. And um, most days, I don't know, sometimes it's most of the time I do 12 minutes and then I have like a 20 minute one before bed that helps me go to sleep. So I sort of fall asleep whilst listening to it. Um, but sometimes it's longer. Sometimes it's 20 minutes. Sometimes if I know I've only got five minutes, I'll still do, still do the five minute one. I think even doing a two minute one still helps. The app that I have has literally a meditation for everything. It like, you know, sleep or before an event or um, if you're stressed or um, manifesting this or there's hangover and there's stuff for everything. And um, so you can just literally choose which one you're feeling on the day. Wait, which app is this? Sorry. This is the Unplug app. It's like I work for Unplug. I just talk about them all the time. Oh my God. <laughs> but um, I don't, by the way. But um, they are amazing. And that's that's from going to those classes in LA. Then I started using their app. And um, it's just a really easy way to get in. They have amazing, loads of different teachers. You can pick which one's your favorite, how many minutes you want to do it for. Um, and I do. I talk about that it. That's the one. I, I, it's funny because we had somebody ask about that. So I'm going to get this right now. Okay, there we go. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and I always, I, um, I try and spread the word like as much as I can, but then I'm always preaching and I'm not always, sometimes I miss a day, but I, I can tell like if I'm doing it consistently, it's much, it's better to be consistent, you know, and have a regular routine with it. But you know, sometimes you're so busy and you're late and you're rushing out the door and you're like, yeah. you can always you can always find time. Like even if I'm in a taxi and I just put my earphones in and then I'm on the way somewhere, I get it done then. Um, yeah. But that's, it, that's what I do. It, it's really crazy. Cause that's actually, it made me think of something too, is that when, when you are in a rush and you're out the door and you're like so nervous and you get anxiety, it's like almost affects whatever you do next, you know? So that could be even cool to listen in the cab or relax yourself to go to a meeting or, cause I find, that like when I'm super anxious 
it affects my mood when I walk in the door and I'm like, oh, I don't want that. Okay, Richard, your turn. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I think it's interesting that Pixie talked about she went to classes first. Right. Where she really locked into it, right? Yeah. So then you Not took up the apps. So that's, you know, there's a lot of apps and, uh, but I thought it was interesting that you started with classes. And that, uh... Yeah, and if, if they had a studio here and it was open at the moment, I I would put, I love going to the classes because you're in a group of people, like you're doing it together and the experience is just you, very focused. We do it for 40 minutes and that's where I really fell in, in, in love with it. Yeah, and I would say that the way that you've been able to be disciplined about this and dedicated to it and actually keeping up your practice is because you are a musician that, <laughs> that has trained you to be dedicated and consistent with practice. Um, I, you know, it, it all depends on the time of the year. A minimum would be 30 minutes a day, uh, 20 minutes in the morning and 10 minutes at night. Uh, from May to September, I usually meditate an hour a day. Um, one day a week, I have a day of mindfulness, which is two hours a day. And then three wow. weeks out of the year, I'll, I'll go on retreat and I'll meditate eight hours a day. Uh, That's amazing. Al almost the entire waking hour. It so makes a difference. It's like, you know, practicing an instrument. Someone's oh. got to call. <laughs> Practicing an instrument, yeah, but that's, it's so true. I mean, it's, it's, I feel like the, the, the meditation for eight hours, like, is that the one that, that you go and you don't talk for a week? Have you done that? I'm assuming you probably have. Well, it's supposed to, you're supposed to, you know, exist in noble silence, they call it. Right. Um, you know, I've gone to the Zen center. Um, you know, there is a little bit of whispering, uh, you know, like what time is uh, the dinner or whatever. Oh, really? Um, but it's it's more or less like that. I mean, you're just devoting every waking moment to uh, meditating. And by the way, you, you meditate while you walk. You know, there's walking meditation. I, I consult a few people that just can't sit, but they love to do mindful walking. So you, everything that you do, you do mindfully, you know, you mind, you eat when you eat, you're mindfully eating when you're listening, you're mindfully listening. Um, and that's, that's the beauty of mindfulness. It's as if meditation, the concentration part of meditation is when you're rehearsing, whether you're practicing on your own, the songs that you've written before you perform or whatever, or with a band, whatever. And then mindfulness is when you actually perform what you've been rehearsing, you perform on the world stage with your relationships with people, whether it's professional or personal, with your activities in the day, you're doing it as mindfully. Ideally, you're doing it mindfully. Uh, and that's something that you can practice all throughout the day. So it's so funny. What it, is there any meditations like those week long ones that are, are that you suggest that people like Because I I've always wanted to try one, but I wasn't sure. I've heard Which of you do like the the no talking ones, like the I feel, ten no talk. That's the one. I feel like I I feel like people have told me, and you tell me, Richard. I mean, I'm that's why I'm very curious about it. But I, I know a lot of people that have done that. It has absolutely changed their life. Like when they go and they just absolutely turn off. So I don't know if if that's. I mean, I'm asking. What do you? What do you? What are your thoughts? Yes, I don't think it's not a controversial thing to say that going on retreats and meditating for extended periods of time mm -hmm. yields benefits that you just can't get. At the same time, you do want to have the daily practice if it's 20 minutes a day or whatever it might be. Like right. As Pixie mentioned, five minutes a day, whatever that is, you want them both. You want that balance of every day. I know people that have gone on retreats and say, well, the e-ticket is actually to go on retreat and also to meditate every day. But there's no question that you get deeper and deeper um, and you go places you can't go to if you're not on retreat. Now, being on retreat, what, what I mean by that is just devoting more time to meditating. You don't have to go to a place, a certain place that's formal necessarily. I mean, the Buddha didn't go anywhere on retreat. He sat by himself under a tree. Um, it's, a, it's about the time you're putting in, the time and the effort that you're putting into it, not where you do it or the, the, the silence part of it. You, you know, you, you could sit, you, that's not necessary. What's necessary, what's good and beneficial is the more time 
that you're putting into it. The, the benefit of going someplace where you don't have to worry about where my next meal is coming from is it gives you less things to worry about. You can, right. you know what I mean? You cannot check your social media. You can do that on your own. You don't have to hand in your cell phone. There's a lot of things you can do on your own. But the one thing that I find uh, when I do these personal retreats is uh, you know, figuring out what, are, what am I gonna have for dinner? You know, it's nice not to have to think about that. But otherwise, it's just a matter of the time you put in. Well, actually, no, that's a really good point because that's why people, we do writing camps, right? Because obviously when you go away to a writing camp, it's like you don't, you know, it's as simple as having to drive down the street to get something or getting groceries or thinking about a bill you have to pay, right? Or, or, or you know, or getting to call someone back. Like when you're at a writing camp, the whole idea is to be able to focus on the song all day, whereas like, now we have so much access to social media, as you said, and other things that it's so easy to get distracted in that process. And again, back to the same thing that we've been saying is like writing a song is so it's it, it's a form of meditation in the sense that if you lose focus, you may not write as good of a song because it's like, you know, the distractions from the world may influence or distract that feeling from really coming out. I found anyway. So. Right. We have a great question that just came in. A viewer looking for some advice. I hear so many benefits of meditation and, and have always wanted to join in and try it. But for me personally, I have Tourette syndrome and meditation does not seem possible. Even though I become good at controlling my condition, I still can't physically stay still and quiet completely. Do you have any tips on someone on how someone like me could approach meditation? Oh, interesting. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, walking meditation, mindful walking. Like I said, I know people that similarly cannot sit still. They just can't. Uh, so they can walk, though. And that's a way, that's a very legitimate way. I mean, the famous, probably one of the two most famous uh, teachers of meditation in the world, Thich Nhat Hanh, has made a huge mission about teaching mindful walking, walking meditation, how beneficial that is. Wow. You get a lot of benefits and it's focusing on your breathing and walking very slowly, mindfully. Um, and you walk like a free person, free from the past, free from the future. And you realize what a miracle it is to walk on earth. It's not a miracle to walk on the moon or walk on water. Work, walking on the earth, he says, is the miracle. So that's one thing you can do. There are various movements that, that you can um, incorporate. There's methods where they, they move the fingers when they count the breath or, or say certain words. I don't remember what the words are, but you can improvise your own movements, um, just counting breaths up to five or 10, however you want. So there are ways to incorporate movement into um, meditation. Slow movement, minimal movement but um it works it's it, and it has many benefits wow that's really cool that's very interesting um actually this is probably a good time to move into a couple other questions i've no i know i've seen a lot of good ones come up hannah do you have do you have a couple that you wanted I to thought, can i ask one question to richard oh yeah um i just wondered you know obviously you're you've been meditating for years like you said you know since 17 but 15 years like solid over that over that time is there was there like a real transitional meditation where you had like a really amazing experience that sticks out in your brain or just like a really like a massive realization that you remember the most no, there, there, there have been a lot of them. There have been gradually, um, even when it was just like uh, 40 minutes a day, there are certain things that come to you to realize, oh, my, my consciousness is not limited by being inside the bones of my skull. This is, this is limitless. And, and you, you get these, what I guess they call it gradual realizations. Um, so you, you get many of them. Um, and, and the key is not to expect Oh, the last time I meditated, I was able to do X, Y, Z. So mm. I should be able to do it now. It's always different. And mm. uh, you can't have an expectation because it's not going to happen the way it happened exactly the same way necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, so it's good not to have expectations. But yes, the, in terms of many different realizations as you go along, um, I mean, there are whole 
science of this and Buddhism, the gates of enlightenment and all this stuff, that there are all these different stages. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's true. There are different stages and different realizations. Obviously, you've had some uh, realizations yourself in, in, in the practice that you have. But it also, I would say that you can have these with, with um, a few hours a day. You don't have to go on retreat, but uh, maybe that's a, that's a quicker way uh, on retreat. Yeah, I would love to do a retreat, but I, I don't know if I could do the one where you can't talk for the whole 10 days. I know that that feels very, that, that, that to me is so um, daunting. I feel yes, that very. done it, Richard, but I didn't know that you could whisper even. I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the Zen center where I've been, there's, you know, this minimal talking, but there is talking, and then they give a, a lecture, and then yeah, the lecture, you ask questions, and by the way, again, you don't have to do this formally, you right. can go to a, an Airbnb and rent it for a three days or a week or whatever, and just spend as much time as you can meditating. They get a lot of benefit from that. You don't have to formally go, they call that personal retreats. I favor those, by the way. I, I, I'm better at that than, you know, regimenting and, you know, having to fold your napkin a certain way. But then it takes a lot more self-discipline, right? So that's... that's, that's yeah, because I can say, oh, I'm going to go there for three days and do it. But then when I get there, am I going to be on my Instagram? <laughs> am I going to be like, <laughs> a cocktail? I don't know. Um, yeah. I would love to to think that I would be able to do it, you know, and have the, the discipline because that sounds lovely. I mean, the idea of being able, like, that's the thing to me about, you know, going to something like a retreat that's planned and, you know, obviously dis the discipline factor, as much as it may be really hard and obviously like something that is daunting, I think part of it, it's the same thing as like having to, you know, go on a diet or having to, you know, these kind of things, like it's still eat there, these things aren't easy working out every day like trying you know what I mean we have to we have to force ourselves to be to do these things even that's why I like going to workout classes because you know that if you sign up for a class you don't want to not show up or if you paid for it or something right it's like so I don't know the self-discipline part is very challenging <laughs> so I mean I don't know I don't I would what how do you do that I mean it's really so much of your on yourself right to to make yourself show up and do it. I mean, is there tricks for that? So it makes you write songs all the time. That's right. But that, but that's a lot that comes from passion and drive. You know, I feel like, you know, here's the thing. I really find that self love for people is super challenging in the sense that I think it's easy to put yourself last, you know, as much as like, you know, and especially in the culture that we live in today, everything's online and people want to show off what they're doing. So they may put something on Instagram. So it seems like they're doing okay. And oh my God, my life is so great. And I'm so happy because they want to present to the world that they're doing okay, but they're actually doing terrible. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, they're not actually taking care of themselves because they're more concerned on what other people might think that they feel rather than how they actually feel. Yeah. So... To me, like, that's something that, how do you unlearn those things? Like, how do you, how do you even, like, teach, start teaching yourself, hey, it's more important for me to feel good than to, like, present on Instagram or something? Like, how do you even go about telling, teaching yourself these things or helping well, you? Do, you do certain things that, that are for your benefit. I mean, you brush your teeth every day. You take a shower. You're taking care of your physical hygiene you have to conceive of it as I'm taking care of my mental, emotional, and spiritual hygiene. Oh. It's, it's just another thing that I have to do every day. And, and as Pixie said, it could be five wow. minutes, two minutes. It's just something just like, yeah, you comb your hair every day, right? You're, you're doing these things for your physical appearance, your physical <laughs> health, physical hygiene. What about your mental health? What about your emotional? It's like Kendrick Lamar said, uh, worried about your career? What about your health? Mm. You know, meditation is a must though it don't hurt if you try so you're thinking too much plus you're too full of yourself worried about your career what what about your health it's mm. so true richard it is so true and that's and that's the okay. thing I think. huh what? Sorry, Jen. I also think on that, like if if your your mind and and your your A game here, 
with you know working out for your mind not just your body or your physical appearance then everything else sorts itself out you know you can achieve amazing things when you're all fantastic here so that's why meditation for me is like a priority because I think once that's um sorted out everything else is so much easier you know oh my god it a hundred percent I think the, the times that I have meditated and really been able to find a place that it's really helped calm me like when I've really you know, gone there and felt like connected. Um, I mean, there's nothing that, that makes you feel better. Like, it's just so, it's so crazy what your body can do or how much control we have over our entire being. It's pretty scary actually in the best way, I think. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> but, um, but Richard, I was funny worried. too, Jenna, because we, we hop on the Zooms I mean, in this COVID era, but we hop on a Zooms and we have to look a certain way, but we never think about our mental health in those situations. We're always thinking about the perception of other people onto us, how we look physically, how we appear versus taking care of who we are on the inside. So I think that's super interesting. Very interesting. Oh my God, it's, it's so true. And I think it's just, it's propelled in today's culture. And so I think that it's like how... That's one, one of the reasons why I really felt like doing these kind of conversations, not only for other people, but just for me or anybody participating in these conversations has been, you know, so nice. Cause I think speaking also is a form of meditation, just cause it's obviously like, if you speak the words into the universe, then you manifest it. And that's obviously something that's so powerful. Um, so I'm actually curious, Richard, I was going to ask, that was going to be my next thing. I, I would love for you to talk about your book a little bit, just in, in this, if there's any people watching or listening, um, you know, just music as a way of a bridge to mindfulness. Like that's so interesting to me, or if there's any tips, I know there's like the 12 steps that you have or anything that you wanted to mention. Yeah, there, there, there are 12 bridges um, connecting. I, I bridges, sorry. 12 bridges. <laughs> Yeah, and then probably chose 12. I mean, I could have found, there's probably 17, but I ended up with 12 because that's- I mean, smart. I, I mean, I don't know if you meant, did you mean it like the 12? It's like the recovery. Probably right? subconsciously <laughs> that it's it yeah. 12, you know. Right. Like, but um, like the 12 commandments. But um, each of the bridges has its own techniques. You know, there, there's, some of them have one technique, some two teaching you how to, uh, practice meditation in different ways. Um, some of it's mindfulness, some of it's concentration, some of it's compassion. It's just uh, different techniques that connect with each uh, relationship between music and mindfulness. So um, it's, I think reading materials uh, on this subject, I do it all the time. I've been meditating 15 years now, seriously, and I'm constantly reading up on it. It's, you, you need to read, the reinforcement, the encouragement, you need to encourage yourself to keep going. And uh, it's, it's, it's another way to um, encourage yourself to learn how to, to have a practice. And um, hopefully it refines your practice and helps your awareness training and helps an understanding of how these techniques work and why it's good to do them. That's really cool. Um... Especially, by the way, especially for music heads. Like it's meant, you don't have to be a musician. You could, but if you're, if you're phonocentric, you know, they say there's three kinds of people, um, uh, kinesthetic, visual and phonocentric. Of course, we're a combination of all three, but there's one that dominates. So people that are phonocentric, those people, uh, will naturally, um, be attracted to some of these techniques, which wow. are based on listening. A lot of them are based on listening. And, um, and it's very helpful in terms of getting into some deep meditative states. So crazy. Cause I feel like that makes so much sense. Cause sound, it's the sound, sound is so powerful. Um, and I think that like, again, like you said, even if you're a music lover and you listen to music's just such a powerful heal, like way of healing, whether, you know, it's like so people, people listen to a song in a restaurant or a store and it may affect their day and they may not even know it. Right. Because they may hear it and it may somehow ingrain in their, you know, in, or in their being or whatever. And they leave the store feeling, you know, better, worse or whatever it is, but it affected them and they don't know why, which is so 
incredible for what music does, you know? And I think that obviously meditation isn't filled all around music, but I do think the aspect of it around music is pretty cool. And I relate to it, obviously. So I think we all do. Yeah. Um, I think we should do a couple more questions that I see. I saw a couple really good ones come in. Um, yeah. Hannah, do you have them? Yes. So we have a question that came in. Do you think meditation could help with the grieving process? I feel so disconnected a lot of the time and wondering if it may help. Um, I mean, I, I am as not, I'm not as much as an expert as, as Richard, but, um, I think that it helps with everything. I'm just talking from my own experience. Um, and yeah, I, I think that it does really help with everything. So obviously going through something like that is, is very, very hard. I think it's the hardest thing that you can go through. Um, and it's definitely helped me and I can only talk from my own experience. So I would definitely recommend. Yeah. <laughs> I would agree uh, that it helps everything. Um, and mindfulness helps you have a relationship to your emotions rather than being stuck in them or captivated by them. So the grieving is there, but there's some space between yourself and your experience of the grieving and allows for some um, way to control your response somewhat to what's happening. And it does, again, you can find the sanctuary within yourself to find the peace within yourself to be able to deal with it a little bit better than without it. Wow, that's so cool. I was thinking too, Richard, if you feel comfortable, um, I thought it might be nice to, to end the episode on a guided meditation from you. Yeah. <laughs> I actually haven't yeah. done mine yet today, so this is good. <laughs> I mean, we don't know if he's going to yet. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no. I don't know. I just thought, listen, okay. for the people watching, for us, for, I mean, I know that you guys are much better than I am, but I would love it. I mean, it would be so nice to, to learn. Okay, we do a, we do a quick one. <clears throat> okay. One. Yay. Okay, so the first thing is <clears throat> to settle in, to settle into where you're sitting, right? Okay. And um, it's going to be a little bit hard for me because they were telling me my, my voice is low and it gets even lower when I do this. <laughs> so I guess I'm going to move in here. Um, be aware of where your feet are on because the floor, because that's holding you up right now. And be aware of your posture. Okay. I want to see spot spots. Yeah. Gonna... Find, a, find a comfortable place Where's to sit. Going, in. I'm going to get comfortable and I need to have a better posture for this. Okay. Oh, there we go. It's good. That's good. Okay. Now, you, you, you want to have a balance between being alert. Right. And being relaxed like a guitar string, you know, if you tune it too tight, it's going to break. But if it's too loose, there's no tonality. Nobody so, fall asleep on this. <laughs> I, <what is> that? <laughs> Nobody fall asleep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. Don't fall asleep. So you have to sit and stay with some dignity. OK. But you want to be relaxed. Right. <clears throat> and your hands are on your legs. Sometimes you want them on your knees or right behind your knees. But closer to you, whatever feels good, whatever is helping you to sit up. And for this meditation, you can close your eyes, okay? And right now, just breathe deeply and be aware that you're sitting. Okay? I'm sitting and I know that I'm sitting. I'm breathing and I know that I'm breathing. I visualize a warm light of awareness that's at the top of your head and move that light down all through your body. And that light brings peace and relaxation. If you find any tension, just 
have that light and relax it. Now focus your awareness on where your body is making contact with the chair. Now focus your awareness on where your feet are making contact with the ground. Now notice how your body is moving as you breathe. You're sitting still and you're moving at the same time. Your chest is rising as you inhale, falling as you exhale. Now notice the sound of your breathing. Listen to the sound of your breathing as if it is the sound of music. It's the sound of your life. So your awareness now is both on your body breathing and the sound of your breathing. You have nothing to do, you have nowhere to go, just breathe. This is where you belong, here in this moment. Now we're going to take a few more deep breaths. And you slowly open your eyes, very slowly. Continue to breathe. Gaze down. Now you can open your eyes. <laughs> wow, that was amazing. Whoa, that's crazy. I love that. <gasps> Hannah, how do you feel? I feel great. <laughs> Oh my God, wait, Richard, that was so good. Pixie, how do you, how do you feel? 
I loved it. I loved yeah, it. Yeah, you do smile. So did you. <laughs> I I like wow, Richard, you're so I really felt that. That's yeah. crazy. Like, your felt... voice is, is so soothing. I need your voice on my app now as well. I know. Do you have an app? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, my favorite, bit, my favorite bit was when you said, this is where you belong. I know. And I was like, oh. I liked when you, like the light part because that really focused me because I feel like I kept on seeing the light and it made me feel yeah I guess and then when you said this is where you belong I really like I really felt that like in my everything like I, wow like I feel like so calm right now like usually my hands shake a little and they're not shaking so that was incredible oh we, we should do it again you know we'll do it again we will and really, honestly this is so cool because we're gonna also put this up on um DSP is on Spotify and Apple so people can go back and and we can even go back and and do it again which is cool. Yeah, should, I don't know, we'll do I don't know if you've ever meditated. Hannah really needs it. Hannah Hannah really needs it. <laughs> I do. <laughs> um, Richard, I was going to say I don't know if you um ever meditated to your own voice but it will be up for you to go listen to it. <laughs> I do all the time, right? It's the voice in my head. Oh, wow. And for everyone watching, I've shared a link to the Unplug app that Pixie spoke about, as well as Richard's book, um, the link to Amazon. So feel free to go ahead and download and purchase. Thank you. I can't wait to read your book, Richard. Thank you. I, I am so grateful to have you guys here today. This was amazing. And honestly, like, we need to do a part two. So please, let's, let's, let's get a part two together because this was absolutely Incredible. I mean, maybe there's something to do with this being the seventh episode, seventh heaven. <laughs> Saying maybe that's the name of this episode. Yeah, seven's my lucky number as well. So I was pleased. Oh my god, I love you! Got, I'm getting too many goosebumps. <laughs> no, but um, actually, I'm not even kidding. It'd be kind of a cute title for this episode. Yeah, I'm what up is, for that. Thank you so much for having Thank me you. on it and for doing these green rooms. It's amazing that you're doing them, Jenna. I mean, I, I'm just trying to, you know, listen, I, I mean, just the fact that I can log off and now go on with my day and feel a little bit more peaceful selfishly is nice, but also to be able to give back to this community of mental health, because, you know, it is something that I struggle with my whole life. And I know that tons of creatives do and the whole world does. And I think it's something that, people are becoming more comfortable and talking about. And I think it's pretty cool because, you know, I've said this before, but growing up, you know, is kind of like not something that you talked about. It was like, oh, you, you know, you have anxiety or you have these issues and it's like an embarrassing thing. But now I'm proud of it. And I feel that it's something that not only I can, you know, get something from, but also I hope to be able to share my experiences, your guys' experiences, and also have us come together and feel like some sense of relief because even now still like man being being even doing stuff like public speaking doesn't have even have to be in the context of like being an entertainment it could be as simple as being at a party or being you know it's somebody's birthday and they say stand up or wedding hey stand up and say something it's like oh my god that's like how do you deal with that like little stuff like that right i mean so anyway this is why I feel that these things are necessary and for people to, you know, feel comfortable to talk about mental health. So, well, it's beautiful what you're doing. It's just, yeah. it's just so necessary and you're reaching a demographic that you're one of the few people that can reach and both of you guys and all of you guys, it's fantastic. It's so necessary and it's so important. Mm -hmm. And the way that you're open, to learning and so have such intellectual curiosity about how all this works is very inspiring, very motivating. Yeah. I mean, I feel the same. I mean, you're, you guys are absolutely amazing. And obviously Pixie is a good friend and I'm just meeting you, Richard, but honestly, you're like, you're pretty special. You're like an angel. Like I honestly feel like very moved by you. It's, it's, it's really, um, me too. Really. Um, I'm really, really thankful. So, me too. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. This has been fun.
Let's do it again soon. Yes, and thank you, Dash Radio, for 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 obviously putting this on. It's been really nice to to do it with Dash. So anyway, see you guys next time. Bye, guys. Lots of love. Thanks, everybody.